again. So nice to see all of your faces. I'm happy you could join me for some more kids yoga. Today, the theme of our yoga lesson will be Onward, Pixar's newest film about two elf brothers named Barley and Ian who go on a quest to spend a day with their father. Before we start, we're going to do our mudras and warm up with some deep yoga breaths to calm our minds and our bodies. So find a spot to sit comfortably, perhaps crisscross yogi sauce. Put your hands on your knees or somewhere else that you can anchor yourself. And together, let's take a deep breath in through the nose and back out through the nose. Go ahead and breathe in. And out. Let's do one more. Breathe in. And out. And then wiggle your fingers to warm up for our mudras. The first mudra we're going to do is called heart full of love. So we're going to use our pointer fingers and thumbs to make a heart and then make a roof for your heart with your other three fingers and bring your heart to your real heart. And the heart full of love mudra is one we use to express self love. We often remember to tell our family members and friends that we love them very much, but we often forget to tell ourselves that we love ourselves. And it's so important that every day we give ourselves an expression of self-love, such as using the heart full of love mudra. So go ahead and sit up nice and tall, close your eyes, and we'll take two more yoga breaths in this mudra. Breathe in and out. Breathe in again, and out, and then open your eyes and wiggle your fingers. The next mudra we're going to do is called yin yang. So you're going to take one hand, put all of your fingers together like so, and put it facing up, kind of right in the center of your belly area. Then you're going to take your other hand, put the fingers together like so, and put the finger, fingertip to fingertip as best you can like this. The yin yang mudra is a reminder that in life there are both good and bad things that happen, but nothing lasts forever. So it's a reminder that when something good is happening, we should relax and enjoy that happy feeling. And then when there are things that aren't so good happening, we can sit through it and know that it's eventually going to end. Whatever it is that's making us uncomfortable won't last forever. Yin and yang are opposites. It's a balance that there is both good and bad in life. So let's sit up nice and tall. Close your eyes and take a breath in and out. Another breath in and out and then open your eyes and wiggle that one out for now. The third mudra we're going to do is heart center. We're going to put our hands together, palm to palm, and put our hands right here at our heart center. And the heart center mudra is one that we can use when we just want to focus on our breath and calming ourselves and listening to what our minds and hearts are telling us. So let's sit up nice and tall in the heart center mudra, close your eyes and take a breath in and out, another breath in and out and then open your eyes and wiggle that one out as well. Okay friends, now it's your turn to choose. Because remember, mudras are a chance for us to express what we're thinking and feeling. So pick a mudra that connects to your thoughts and feelings today. And it could be one I just showed you, or it could be any mudra you've learned at any time. So on the count of one, sit up nice and tall. Two, close your eyes. And three, pick your mudra. And in our special mudras that we each chose to express what we are thinking and feeling, we're going to take three deep yoga breaths in and out through the nose. Breathe in 
and out. Breathe in and out. One more breath in and out. And then gently open your eyes and hug that mudra or tuck it into your heart. It's the mudra that you chose, so you want to keep it close today. Now in a moment, we're going to stand and move our bodies with sun salutations. I will guide you with words through the first round, and then I will just be modeling on the screen. So go ahead and stand. Find a place where you can get comfortable in mountain pose with your feet firmly on the ground. Head held high, hands at heart center. And we'll start by sending a love whoosh. So think of somebody that you care about very much. Perhaps they're in your home with you right now, or perhaps they're somewhere else a little bit further away. Picture that person clearly in your mind, and then rub your hands together to get the love flowing from your heart to your fingertips. And on the count of three, we're going to send our love straight from our heart out in the world to that person with the whoosh. Ready? One, two, three, whoosh. Now bring your hands back to heart center for our sun salutation. Good. Stretch your arms up. Gently dive forward to touch your toes. Hands on the ground, feet go back. Now very slow and steady. Move your belly to the ground. Good. Push and look up. Curl your toes and come to down dog. And just take a breath in and let it out. Good. Look at your hands, step or jump. Keep touching those toes. Now slowly stand and stretch, arms out and up. Good. Here we go, let's do the next one. Remember to breathe in and out. Good. Good job. Third time. Deep breaths. Good. Now look at your hands. Step or jump. Slowly stand and stretch. Good job. You can stay standing because we're going to start with a standing pose. We're going to retell the story of Barley and Ian. Like I said, two elves who go on a quest. A quest is an adventurous journey in search of something. What they're searching for is a magical tool to bring their father back so that they can spend a day with their dad. So the first pose we're going to do is to represent our two elf friends, Barley and Ian. We're going to do chair pose. So bend your knees, sit down like you're in a chair, bring your arms up, but then bring your hands behind your ears because elves have large pointy ears that stick up. So we are doing our elf chair pose for Barley and Ian. Good. Now, go ahead and stand back to mountain pose. Barley and Ian go on a quest, which is a journey to look for something. We are going to do warrior three to represent this quest as though we are moving forward. So find a focal point somewhere in front of you that's not moving. 
shift your weight into one foot, put your other foot behind you, and put your arms out straight ahead. Now we are moving forward like in a quest. You can leave your foot with the toe on the ground or you can lift it up if you feel well balanced. Warrior three. Good. And then come back to mountain pose. Let's do the other side. So shift your weight to the other foot. Put your other foot back. Arms come out and up. Leave your toe on the ground or lift it up if you feel well balanced. Warrior three to represent our quest. Good. Now come back to mountain pose. Now Barley and Ian, the two elves, travel in a van named Guinevere. Guinevere was a famous queen from medieval times. So to represent the van Guinevere, we're going to do goddess pose. So you're going to put your feet out wide, squat down, bring your hands on up overhead. We are in goddess pose for Guinevere. Excellent. Now come back to mountain pose. The first character that they run into on their quest is a manticore. A manticore is a mythical beast with the head of a lion. So to represent the manticore, we're going to do star pose, feet out wide, toes pointing out, reach your arms on up to the side, and then we're going to create claws like a lion and roar, roar. Go ahead and do that, roar, like the manticore. Good and then come on back to mountain pose. Okay, So when they go to the manticore, they're asking for directions, and she tells them to go up to the mountains. So we are in mountain pose, but we're going to go into extended mountain pose for this. So go ahead and reach your arms on up, giving a nice stretch, maybe even look up at the ceiling. Bend your elbows slightly, do a little back bend here for those mountains that the manticore tells Ian and Barley to go to. Good, and then straighten back on up. And hands come to heart center. Now on their way to the mountains, they come across some obstacles. The first obstacle they face are some sprites, which are mischievous little fairies with little wings. Although they are riding on motorcycles, if you've seen the movie. So we're going to do tree pose to represent these sprites. So bring one foot up, keep your toe down for a kickstand. And then bring out cactus arms to represent wings. You can even flap them. You can leave your toe on the ground or bring it up slightly. Tree pose to represent those sprites, those mischievous fairies. And then come on back to mountain pose. Let's do the other side because there were a lot of sprites in this. So bring up your other foot, cactus arms. You can even flap them. Leave your toe on the ground or lift up your foot to your middle of your calf. Just remember not to put your foot on your knees. And then come on back to mountain pose. They also run into a centaur, which is a half man, half horse. And this centaur is a police officer trying to take them back home rather than let them continue on their quest. So to do this centaur policeman, we are going to do horse pose. So put your feet out like we were doing goddess. You're going to squat down again, keep your hands at your heart center, and just shift from side to side in our horse pose, representing that centaur policeman who wants them to go back home. All right, and then come back to mountain pose. Then they come to a canyon that with a bridge only on the other side, so they have to build their own bridge to get across. So we're going to do bridge pose and I'm going to turn to my side on my mat. So you're going to lie down for this on your back, but keep your knees up like this. And then in bridge pose, you're going to lift your hips up off the floor. And if you can, bring your hands to clasp underneath you. You created a bridge just like Ian and Barley did to cross that canyon. Let's hold it for a breath. Breathe in and out. One more breath in and out. And then go ahead and lower your hips back down to the floor. We're going to stay in a, uh, on the floor for the next pose because they come to a river that they have to sail down. So for this, we're going to do fish pose. So put your feet out in front of you like so. And then you're going to lift yourself up, putting your hands, palms down on the ground, right underneath 
your lower back and then look up at the ceiling in fish pose representing that long river that they had to sail down. You can make a fish face if you want. Very good. Let's take another couple breaths here. Breathe in and out. Another breath in and out. And then very carefully bring yourself up to a seated position. Okay. You can stay seated for a moment. Once they get down that river, they actually get to the end of their quest where they find a magical jewel that they need to bring their father back. But they wake up a large dragon who tries to prevent them from getting what they need. So we're going to do dragon pose. We're going to come into a lunge. So put one foot in front of you. Other foot behind. This is called runner's lunge. And then you're going to move the foot that's in front of you to the side like this. And you can stay just like this, or you can lower down onto your forearms in dragon pose. Let's take a couple breaths here, either with your forearms down or up on your hands. Take a breath in and out. Another breath in and out. Then bring your foot back to center. Go ahead and put that foot back so that you're in plank for a moment. Bring the other foot forward. Runner's lunge. Move your foot to the side. Stay here or come down onto your forearms for two breaths in dragon's pose. Breathe in and out. One more breath in and out. And then bring your foot back to center. And this time, go ahead and bring the back foot forward and come to sit on your bottom. Because once they defeat the dragon, they are able to spend the rest of that day with their father. And they are reunited with family love. To show that, we're going to do flower pose, kind of making a heart with our legs and feet. So bring the bottoms of your feet to touch. Put your hands underneath your ankles and stay here. So we're connecting our legs, feet, and hands, just like family love connects us. Or you can lift up your feet, making sure you balance staying upright. Good, let's take two breaths here. Breathe in and out. One more breath in and out. And then go ahead and lower yourself. And come back up to stand in mountain pose. We're going to go through that story with the poses very quickly. Starting with our two elves, Barley and Ian. Come down to chair pose. Create your elf ears. Good. Our two main characters, our elves, Ian and Barley, go on a quest. Come on up to warrior three. Hands on up. Keep your toe down or lift up. Good, take a breath and out. Switch sides, warrior three representing that quest, their journey to spend a full day with their dad. Lifting your foot or leave it down. Take a breath in and out. Good, coming back to mountain pose. And they take this quest in their van named Guinevere, named after a famous queen. We will come down to goddess pose, good. Riding in Guinevere, they go and find the manticore. Go ahead and stand right on up into star pose. Make your lion claws and roar. Rawr. Good. And the manticore tells them to go to the mountains. Let's do extended mountain pose. Reaching on up. Giving a little back bend. Straightening and coming back to mountain pose. But on their way to the mountains, they have some obstacles. They run into some mischievous sprites. We're going to do tree pose with cactus arms, flapping our wings. Good. Other side. Keep your toe down or lift it. Cactus arms with wings. 
And they also come across the centaur policeman coming into horse pose who wants to prevent them from finishing their quest. He would like them to just go home where they will be safe. Good. Then they come to, once they get past the centaur, they come to a canyon where they must build a bridge. So let's come down into bridge pose on our backs. Lift up your hips if you can, clasp your hands underneath you. Good, they create this bridge so that they can cross the canyon and get to the river. Bring your hips down, straighten your legs on out. Bring your hands underneath you, underneath your lower back. And look up, representing the river, making your fish face if you would like. And then come on up. Once they get to the end of the river, they make it to this jewel that they are looking for, but there is a dragon. So come down into dragon pose, starting in our runner's lunge. Move one foot to the side. Stay here or lower down to your forearm for just a breath. Breathe in out. Good. Bring that foot back center. Go back to plank. Other foot comes up. Move it to the side. Stay here or go down onto your forearms for a breath. Breathe in and out. Bring that foot center. Step your other foot forward. Come to a seat bringing your feet to touch because they are reunited with their family. We're going to represent family love with flower pose. Either keep your feet down or lift. Let's take two breaths here. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And then lower yourself back down. And find a way to sit comfortably. We're going to cool our bodies down now after moving through our quest, our story, with some finger tracing breathing, following our fingers just the way that Ian and Barley followed their map. Put one hand up. Take your pointer finger on your other hand. Bring it to the base of your thumb. Switch your hands if it doesn't feel right the first way you did it. Now breathe in and trace up your thumb. Breathe out and trace down your thumb. Breathe in, trace up your pointer finger. Breathe out, trace down. Breathe in, trace up your center finger. Breathe out and trace down. Breathe in, up your ring finger. Breathe out and down. In up your pinky and out back down let's do that one more time coming back to the base of your thumb maybe you want to close your eyes this time or maybe you want to watch your finger as it traces inhale up your thumb exhale down inhale up exhale down Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Very good. And now we're going to transition to our yoga nap. So find somewhere you can lie on your back comfortably, legs out straight, arms at your side, face looking up at the ceiling above, and close your eyes. And take in a nice deep breath. And exhaling. Another inhale. And an exhale. Continue to breathe in 
and out. Allowing your body to relax more and more with each deep breath. Notice how peaceful you become with your deep breathing. Notice how your muscles begin to relax, to feel good and loose. Continue to take deep breaths in and out as my voice guides you on a marvelous adventure. Imagine yourself walking down a well-worn path in a beautiful forest. The trees are leafy and green with buds of flowers ready to bloom. Sunlight filters through the rustling leaves overhead, creating shadows that dance on the ground beneath your feet. It is peaceful and serene walking beneath this canopy of trees in this lovely forest. In the distance, you hear a waterfall. You carefully walk towards the rushing water sound. As you come to the path's end, you come into a clearing of sunlight and you see a rushing stream. You see the most beautiful white waterfall right in front of you. The waterfall is calming and it looks as if it's wet sunshine cascading down onto the large rocks below. The sound of the rushing water fills your ears and relaxes you. You reach your hand down into the pool of water. The water is cool and refreshing to the touch on this warm spring day. Sit down a while and enjoy the spectacular scenery. Listen as the water pounds down on the rocks. As you sit here, you feel any stress or worries you've been holding on to be washed away by the soothing sound of the water. The waterfall rushing down, its sound and its sight relaxes you more and more. It clears your mind of any frustration and difficult thoughts. Continue to sit by the waterfall and breathe, allowing the sound of the pounding water to wash your worries away. Just let them go. You may notice that you're feeling calm and relaxed here in this place. This magical forest in springtime is a special place just for you. You can come back here in your mind at any time that you want to calm your body and let go of any worries or stress. Here you can visit when you want to relax and find peace. You can come here just by thinking of this place and imagining yourself here. This calm, peaceful spot by the waterfall invites you to wash away your worries and stress anytime you need. Take in another deep breath and let it out. You feel calm and refreshed now. Take another inhale, feeling renewed, fresh energy entering your body, refreshing you completely. And exhale, let it go. Another inhale, 
and exhale. Then begin to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Make circles with your wrist and make circles with your ankles. Going first one way, then stopping to reverse and go the other way. Softly rock your head side to side on the ground. And then bend your knees and hug them in tightly to your chest, giving yourself some self-love, a great big hug. And then in a way that is kind to your body, bring yourself up to a seated position. We're going to close with let peace begin with me. Bring your hands to an open lotus flower at heart center. You may simply open and close your hands or close one finger at a time and opening one finger at a time. Or you may alternate fingers if you've been shown how to do so. We'll say it three times. Join in when you're ready. Let peace begin with me. Let peace begin with me. Let peace Begin with me. Now bring your hands to heart center. And we'll end our practice today by bowing and wishing each other peace. Peace. Thank you so much for joining me today, friends. I hope you have a wonderful, peaceful rest of your day.